Welcome, it says. Okay, welcome, everybody. I know you. <laughs> oh, welcome to the Phoenix Seventh Day Baptist Church. We're a small group, but if you're ever in Phoenix or visiting, stop by and see us. We'd love to have you. Okay. Um, let's have prayer and then we'll have our hymn. Okay? Heavenly Father, we ask for your Holy Spirit to touch us, open our ears and our minds, and help us to have a great Sabbath. Thank you for your love. In Yeshua's name, amen. We can stand for our hymn, and we have a choir director coming up. I suppose I'm now the choir director. <laughs> our first song will be Holy Spirit, Truth Divine. And uh, yeah, like Jay said, please stand as we sing. Lyrics are in the bulletin. Good morning, everybody. I am going to be reading from the New King James Version. Matthew 24, verse 7. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. And hits close to home since a lot going on in the world. Uh, will you join me for prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us together. We uh, we appreciate everything that you've done for us. I ask that you take care of all of our family and friends that may be struggling with life challenges, illnesses. I ask that you be with your church, give them the ability to discern your character from that which is not. Have your followers look to you and not to, not to men of the world to lead them. I ask that the love that you ask us to have for each other shows in all of us. And I pray that you give relief to those that really need it, whether their pain is mental or physical or spiritual. And I pray you continue to be a guiding light for the world. I'm asking this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for the prayer, James. That was really pretty. All right, our next hymn today is In Christ Alone. Please stand. You guys have a great time. I'm glad we have little guys here. Okay. Time seems to have this tricky way of running out. And we have this dangerous habit of twisting warnings into harmless nothing. Will the return of Christ for you be the ultimate disaster? Or will it be the fulfillment of all your dreams? It is mine. I hope it is yours too. As we turn the pages of the Bible, Will you be hoping to learn that you have a little more time? Or will you be eagerly searching for some assurance? The waiting time will not be long. I like that. Does our God want us to be taken by surprise? Will he return without warning us? Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he reveals his secrets unto his servants, the prophets. Amos 3, 7. God is not trying to trick us or trap us or even surprise us. He has pledged to let us know 
when he is about to do something great that affects our destiny. If he had Noah preach for 120 years to warn the world of a coming flood, would he let this generation come to its end without a warning? We don't have Noah, but we have the Bible with all its information we need. But didn't Jesus say that we cannot know when he will return? But the day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels, not Jesus, but the Father only. Matthew 24, 36. We cannot know the exact time he will return. I remember years ago, not that long ago, but uh, Elder Kemping in California put up signs, Jesus is coming in 2011. And of course, 2011 came and they said, well, no, it's going to be next year. And it didn't happen. And I remember I was in the Adventist church for 75 years. 1844, Jesus is coming. Sell all your property. Get out on the mountaintops and wait for him. Because October the 22nd at midnight hour, he's going to be here. So they did. He didn't come. <laughs> and then I remember, oh, one of the elders had a vision. is walking through a cornfield. And uh, he said, oh, uh, the reason he didn't come is he was going into the most holy place. Well, if you read Hebrews 10, it tells you he went once after he died into the most holy place, beyond the veil. We can't put time when Jesus is going to come. We have to be ready. We cannot know the exact time. We need not to be discouraged by false prophets who set dates for the end of the world. But does that mean we cannot know even when the event is near? What did Jesus say? We cannot know the time, but now learn the prophecy of the fig tree or the parable. When his branches are yet tender and putting forth leaves, ye know the summer is near. So likewise, when you see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. You think about what's going on. That was Matthew 24, 32, and 33. What is going on right now? We got Russia putting ships around Cuba. That happened a while back. And nation after nation is scared. Uh, the United States is scared we're going to have a nuclear war. It can't be much longer. All these things, Jesus in his chapter is speaking of his coming. He gives us numbers of signs that would take place in the world that he is about to return. All these things to the unbeliever, to the careless, there are warnings that time is short. To those who know and love him, they are happy reminders that he has not forgotten his promise to return. What are some of these things and situations that will exist among the nations? For nation 
shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. That was our verse 24, 7 of Matthew. Is this happening? We are all too aware of the jitterness in different international relations. What did Jesus say about disasters? And there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in different places. Have you heard of any famines lately? Are earthquakes? What about crime? Have we seen any crime lately? It's all over the news. Matthew 24, 12. And because iniquity, sin, shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. What did Jesus say? about the task of witnessing to the world. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. Matthew 24, 14. And someone says, oh, now I know it will be a long time before Christ returns. People are being born faster than the gospel is being preached. It'll be a long time. I can remember when I was in, I think it was third or fourth grade, and some of the kids were saying, when do you think Jesus is going to come? Now, this is 1950. I, I said, well, I think 1975 Jesus will be here for sure. Well, 75 has come and gone. <laughs> oh. But that kind of thinking can be deceiving. It can be dangerous. Did you ever stop to think what the global network of communications that we have now? God could finish the work of taking the gospel to the whole world almost overnight. The world is wired for it. God had the finishings of his work in mind when he permitted our improvements, our knowledge to increase. Did you know the prophet Daniel predicted this? But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book. I wonder what that was written about. I've always thought about that. Even to the end of time, many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. You know, maybe a century or so ago, our transportation was that of Abraham's. We were riding horse and buggy. And look what we're riding now. We have advanced in speed that boggles the mind and have knowledge beyond increased. The last century has been a fury of inventions. And our scientists have not just split the atom, but they're tampering with the secrets of life itself. Do you think one moment that God would permit them to go this far if he were not about to call a halt to it all? Surely he must be the very verdict of our Lord's return. You do not always have to, you do not have to be a Bible student. 
to feel what's going on, to know we are living in Earth's final days. Do you remember when you were talking to your children, your wife, your mom, somebody? They said, just wait 15 minutes more, please. Just wait. Just wait. Yes, we are heading towards the day everything stopped. Toward the moment when Earth's pendulum will suddenly stop in the middle of the swing. This generation, to seems it's doomed, it's afraid, so afraid that the rays of the moon coming up on radar screen could send our defense forces out in a panic, if not into nuclear war. But Jesus didn't say it would be this way, and upon the earth, distress of nations, publicities, the sea, the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after things which are coming upon the earth. Luke 21, 25, and 26. Disasters. Fear, this is our generation. You could recognize it anywhere. Does that have to be our state of mind? How did Jesus tell us to react to the signs of his return? And when you see these things beginning to come to pass, then look up and lift your heads, for your redemption draws nigh. I could just see that, can't you? The world's going crazy, and all of a sudden the sky opens up and we see millions of angels. That's exciting to think about. You'll have to excuse me. I have allergies and my eyes are just messing up today. To those who are unprepared, the second coming of Christ is only a frightening deadline. But if we know and love our Lord, it means welcoming our King, the King who already rules our hearts by invitation. And even in the disasters that surround us, we shall hear the happy message. Jesus is coming. Well, will not some try to reason away the deadline that they fear? Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers walking after their own lust, and saying, where is this promise in Jesus' coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things considered or as, were as they were at the beginning of creation. It's been 2,000 years, a little more, since he was here. Can't be too much longer. And they're saying nothing is happening yet, so it won't happen. That is their line. But are not we to know the scriptures and see the signs of his coming fulfilled in every side? Are we not in danger too? Are we not in danger? of some of the thinking of the scoffers. And take heed, 
to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with drunkenness, careless, and cares of this life, and so that they will come upon you unaware. For as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth. Therefore watch ye therefore, and pray always that ye may be accepted and worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass, and to stand before the Son of God. As a snare, like a trap, it could happen to us. But it doesn't have to be a trap. Not if we're alert, whether or not we are surprised or whether or not we are prepared depends entirely on our relationship and the reading of the warnings. God isn't playing tricks or trying to trap us, but we play tricks on ourselves. Nothing's happened yet. I've never seen anything happening. It won't happen. It's like Pearl Harbor when they were having a warning of a flood, tsunami. We put ourselves in deep with business as usual, like in Noah's day. I don't smell any brimstone or like Sodom and Gomorrah. We put off guard. We are, excuse me, we have our fears and we push aside the scriptures at times. Time has never stopped yet. So how could it stop? The coming of Jesus always has been even in the future. It's going to say something. When my grandmother, and this would have been in the early 50s, she'd say, I only want to live to see Jesus come. She loved the Lord. She didn't get to see him come, and here I'm at her age. But if I'm in the ground, it doesn't matter. I'll get to see him. Our minds simply can't conceive that what it would be like to look back on the coming of Christ, to look back at the end of time. God is not trying to trick us. He's not trying to slip a surprise on us. He gives us warning after warning. He gives us signs. But what else can he do? Pearl Harbor was warned and against a dangerous uh, tsunami. For three hours and 15 minutes, they sound the alarm. And yet they didn't pay attention. They didn't think it was going to hit them. And it did. In Noah's day, there were warnings for 120 years. The ark, it was completed and ready for the strange voyage from the old world to the new world. It stood in full view of all the people. They had been invited to come in. They didn't need to be surprised. 
but they were. Our generation, too, will be surprised, but not because God has played a trick. Men and women will be surprised because they thought those who sounded the warning, us Christians, were extremist, alarmist, and unstable. They'll be surprised. They thought they would have, that it wouldn't happen this soon. Surprise, because they didn't know that far out in space, beyond the corridors of Orion, the King of Glory was about to begin his long journey towards the star-lined way of the sky, back to a tiny world on the edge of his universe, a world that once crucified him, but a world that he has not forgotten. He who cared enough to die for us, he who couldn't let us go, well, he'll let, will he let a single man or woman go to ruin without doing something? He has done everything he can. When we get close to our time, when there is only one night, you need to be warned. You need to be re reminded of the judgment. You need to be informed. You need to have the facts. And yet, with all the information, you know how urgent or how vital or how correct informed we are, we cannot be saved. Only Jesus can save us. And when there's only one night, nothing matters but the cross of Calvary. Nothing matters but what your Lord did for you and what you decide to do about it. Sorry, I'm so jittery, but can't see. <laughs> but I love the Lord, and I know you do too. And thank you for listening. Let me say a little prayer before I sit down. Heavenly Father, we are waiting for you. We're praying for our kids, our loved ones. We want to see everybody in heaven. I want to see you come. I would love to see that. But if not, I'll be waiting. Thank you for your Sabbath. And especially thank you for your son. Without him, we wouldn't be here. I ask all these things in your son's name. Amen. Oh, we have another hymn to sing. Thank you, Jay, for your message. I enjoyed it. And I think the song here, I believe these were picked by Linda, is very topical. Um, please stand as we sing Sweet By and By lyrics on the back of your bulletin. <laughs> <laughs> 